Welcome to a world where nothing is quite as it seems. Welcome to Fake Britain. Here at the Fake Britain House, we'll reveal the fakes that are flooding the market, conning people like you and me and making money for the criminals. We'll investigate the fraudsters who are selling us something that isn't real and could be dangerous. And we'll help you avoid falling for a fake. Today on Fake Britain, the dangerous ladders that could lead to disaster. I could have broke my ankle and I'm self-employed. That would have been my livelihood. The fluffy hot water bottles that could kill your child. All that separates a child using this from mains electricity is this thin piece of plastic. The experts using technology to catch the identity fakers. His image has been placed onto this counterfeit visa in order for him to gain status. And the fake wood-burning stove installers putting lives at risk. We expected to have a fully functioning wood burner and instead our home was filling with smoke. It's very useful, but it's also potentially very dangerous. Yes, it's a ladder. We'd all expect that any ladder we buy would be safe. Every ladder sold here in the UK has to meet basic safety standards. Unfortunately, fake Britain has found that's not true. Knowing that, when you're standing up here, not a great feeling. It's reckoned there are two million ladders in use across the country. You can buy one from a whole range of places, from online sellers to major supermarkets. But last year, ladders were the cause of over 50,000 visits to A&E. Little wonder that they need to meet stringent product standards before being sold to the general public. All ladders manufactured and supplied within Britain and the EU should be manufactured to specific standards and correctly classified. But as Keith Dorman from Cambridgeshire discovered, not every ladder's safety claims can be trusted. Keith had decided to buy a ladder, so he went online and quickly found one that he thought could do the job. The product clearly stated it could hold 150 kilograms, or around 23 stone. The weight stated on the details of the item, I automatically thought that would take my weight. But the ladder wasn't all that it appeared to be. The first time I used it, I, I took it into the kitchen to hang a curtain, and as I put my foot on the bottom step, put some weight on, the step folded around my foot, and I stepped back in shock that it broke. Keith feels as though he had a lucky escape. I could have broke my ankle, and I'm self-employed, that would have been my livelihood. So, to me personally, it could have been terrible. Fake Britain has discovered that Keith is not the only victim of potentially dangerous ladders out there. Online, there are dozens of reports of ladders buckling or breaking, sometimes on their very first outing. And so, the authorities have decided to investigate whether some retailers are selling ladders that carry fake claims about their strength and safety. Acting on a tip-off, Ian Millwood, from Derbyshire Trading Standards, decided to test the market for fake ladders. We went out looking for examples of these. Some of these were only available online, some were available through high street stores. All of the ladders that Trading Standards test purchased displayed various safety markings, including claims to meet specific ladder safety requirements. Ian Millwood wanted to see if these safety claims were genuine, so he sent the ladders for independent testing. The telescopic ladder tested by Trading Standards extends to 3.75 metres and is a type of ladder used by many professional tradesmen. And in this case, when it was tested, uh, two of the locking pins have, have actually seized in place. The safety claims on this ladder were fake, and this fault could have resulted in fingers being trapped between rungs. 
all four of the retailers that sold these ladders, including a supermarket chain, were given a caution by trading standards. And all of these products have been removed from sale. Fake Britain decided to investigate if other potentially dangerous ladders with fake safety markings might be on sale. Following a tip-off from an industry insider, we purchased a telescopic ladder from a Cardiff branch of Cash and Carry Macro UK, now part of the Booker Group. The ladder was of a similar type to the telescopic one previously bought and tested by Trading Standards, and claimed to have been tested by the safety certification company SGS. We sent the ladder to be tested at the British Standards Institution, BSI. Mark Mayo is BSI's ladder expert. We're testing this ladder to the requirements of EN 131 because that's what it's claiming compliance with. Mark will test the ladder for torsion, which is the degree to which it twists when subjected to pressure. By law, this ladder should be able to twist no more than 18 degrees, meaning it won't topple over if the person on it shifts their weight to the left or right. Initial reading is 25.9, which is way over the 18 that's allowed, and it's rising as the twist continues in the ladder. The readings are still going up. It's a definite failure to EM131. As we saw from the packaging and the ladder itself, they're claiming to meet the requirements of EM131. That's fake. It doesn't meet that requirement, as we can quite clearly see, uh, and the ladder is not fit for purpose. It's a big fail for the ladder. It carries fake safety labelling and it could be dangerous. We contacted Blackspur, part of Hamble Distribution, who supplied Macro with the ladder that we bought. Blackspur sent us this SGS certificate and report for the ladder, which we sent to SGS for inspection. SGS revealed that the certificate and report had been faked, telling us some of the results have been altered. Clause 4.7, 5.7 and 5.15 were not tested and therefore should be showing NT instead of pass. The test results that had been faked related to torsion. Blackspur told us that they had been cheated and that the genuine report had been altered without their knowledge. We contacted Booker Group PLC, who own Macro, and they said, we thank BBC Fake Britain for bringing this to our attention. Any customer who wishes to return a ladder will receive a full refund. No other such ladders are being sold at Macro. A passport is probably the most sophisticated and complex document we'll ever hold. It's made under high security conditions and it's designed to protect you, your identity and the security of the country. ID documents are the most forged in the world and telling the real from the fake can be extremely challenging. We followed the work of the National Document Fraud Unit as they took on a case of suspicious IDs. Around 200 million people enter and leave Britain every year. Border Force teams stationed at entry points across the UK are responsible for making sure everyone coming into or leaving the country is who they claim to be. But the use of fake ID documents is on the rise. Last year, Home Office enforcement teams arrested over 10,000 people attempting to use fake documents at the border. When authorities need to detect whether an identification is fake, they contact the National Document Fraud Unit. The team there are uniquely equipped to uncover identity fakery. Henry Barra is in charge of thousands of these genuine ID documents from all over the world. We have documents, passports, identity cards, driving licences, um, for instance here, Sierra Leonean passports, Somalia, Soviet Union, South Sudan, driving licences, Kazakhstan, Greece, the United States. In total, there are nearly 100,000 of these legitimate ID documents in the archive. Sometimes the best way to spot a fake document is by looking at the real thing. 
we use these as comparison documents. So if uh, documents are referred to us for an opinion as to their authenticity, we will hopefully um, have, a, have a document of that same series. When Home Office enforcement officers suspect that they've found a fake, they get in touch with the experts. And today, these suspected fake documents have just arrived. They've been sent by the police and were being used by three men who were detained at the Eurostar terminal at King's Cross, St Pancras. Customs officials thought the documents looked suspicious and the police are holding the men while the documents are assessed. On initial inspection, Nadia Bremner, an analyst, doesn't like the look of these visas. I'm looking at the background print on the visa, so I'm looking to see if it's been printed correctly and looking for fine lines of solid colour. And here, it kind of breaks down into random coloured dots, and that's not what you want to see. Now I'm going to compare the background print in this visa to a genuine document and just have a look at, at the differences between the two. And you can see that with the genuine document, you've got lots of crisp, clear print, fine lines of solid colour, nice, legible, extra small print. Um, and if you can compare that to the suspect document where you've got lots of dots and it's just a really overall poor quality. Nadia examines every detail on the visa. So I'm just looking at the background print um, to see how that interacts with the holographic feature because the background print should run over the top of the holographic device. So this entire visa um, appears to me to be counterfeit and his image has been placed onto this counterfeit visa in order for him to gain status in Italy. So the visas are fake, but what about the UK residency documents two of the men were found with? So this residence permit grants him access to the UK as a student, so he can live and remain in the UK as long as he's a student, um, but he can only work 20 hours per week maximum. Um, on first glance with this one, it doesn't look too brilliant, to be honest. Um, there's a white border along the edge here, the left and right-hand side edges, um, which there shouldn't be, so I'm, I'd like to have a proper look at that under magnification. I'm particularly interested in where the colours merge together, so where you've got pink that should merge nicely into blue. So I'm going to have a quick look at that with the genuine document um, and see how that is in a genuine specimen. So this is a genuine specimen that I'm looking at now on the left-hand side of the screen. And under magnification, as with the visas, we're looking for crisp, nice quality print. This one's got extra small print running along under here, and you can see it's quite legible, GBR um, and EU, lots of extra small print, lots of nice quality colors. Um, and the blue and the pink merge together quite nicely. Fake IDs are designed to fool the naked eye, but not a powerful microscope. So again, at this stage, just by looking at it with magnification, you can see that the one on the right is a fake residence permit. The three men found holding these fake documents pleaded guilty and were sentenced to four months in prison for possession of controlled identity documents with intent to use. They're currently awaiting deportation. Henry Barra thinks the problem is getting worse. I think a lot of organised criminal gangs seem to be diverting into this, this area of producing and distributing false documents simply because the penalties for getting caught seem to be a lot less than, for instance, more traditional careers such as um, drug smuggling. And the faker's ability to produce convincing fakes is improving dramatically. We have seen some frighteningly, frighteningly high-quality uh, false documents recently. Uh, one particular case comes to mind of somebody that uh, applied for asylum in 47 different identities. That would then mean the benefits uh, to which they would be entitled uh, would be granted at each of those uh, identities. The unit has examined over 30,000 suspected fake ID documents over the past five years, providing key evidence in numerous criminal cases. We would like to think that we're a thorn in the side of forgers and organised criminal gangs. We certainly uh, do our best. We won't pretend we're on top of the problem. It seems to be a burgeoning industry. It's clearly very lucrative. Uh, the battle goes on. We spend more per head on toys than anywhere else in Europe. The industry is huge and worth billions. What that means is that there's vast choice for mums and dads and, of course, children.
but you wouldn't want to choose any of these because they're all fake. We've found that fakes like these are openly on sale throughout the UK and despite every toy in this country being subject to strict regulations, some are among the most dangerous objects children will ever come into contact with. The vast majority of fake toys coming into the UK arrive through our ports. Border Force officers recently discovered a haul of products aimed at children that looked fluffy enough on the outside, but were in fact hiding a dark secret. They call in Mark Rolfe from Kent Trading Standards. They're a fairly simple device, cuddly toy on top. Underneath, there's a hot water bottle, um, which is separate from the, from the cuddly dog. You fill it up with water through here, and then you plug it into the mains. Uh, and the idea, obviously, is that it heats the water and you've got your soft toy hot water bottle. The problem with these products is actually when you get inside to the electrics. I mean, actually, it doesn't make sense if you think about it to plug a hot water bottle into the mains. Um, but if I cut this one open... What we have inside is a, is a, a thin plastic water tank. It has in it a tablet here which dissolves in the water and it makes the water uh, conduct electricity. And then you have the electrics, um, which is this part here. These two screws are just electrodes and the way this heats the water up is to pass mains electricity through the water uh, which, which has got this dissolved in it to make it conduct the electricity. So actually all that separates you as a user or the child using this from mains electricity is this thin piece of plastic. Mark was understandably concerned by the children's hot water bottle, so he sent it for testing. The findings would scare any parent. One of the safety issues we've identified with this is that the means of it cutting out if the water gets too hot is unreliable. And what that means is that the water could boil in the bag. And boiling water obviously turns to steam. Steam expands remarkably quickly, uh, leading to the bag bursting. And the child would be covered with boiling water and then exposed to live electricity. Really, from a child protection point of view, it couldn't be worse. Despite the dangers inside, this product is covered in safety markings, all of which are fake. The people who've manufactured this potential death trap have really gone to town to try and make sure that consumers think it's a safe item. They've put the CE mark everywhere they could think of. It's, it's there on the actual toy itself, um, and they've actually applied it to the packaging of the box here as well with all the other symbols that you would expect to find uh, on a quality item. For Mark Rolfe, seeing a CE mark being faked on such a potentially dangerous product is particularly frustrating, as it undermines a standard we all trust. The reason for that is we tell people to rely on it. We tell parents to rely on it when they're buying toys for their children. And if people are faking it, actually that puts children at risk, with parents being as responsible as they can be. An investigation into these dangerous soft toys is now underway. And Mark Rolfe has no doubts about the kind of criminal pushing this product out to unsuspecting parents. This is organised criminal gangs duping responsible parents into believing their products are safe when they are in fact incredibly dangerous. Wood-burning stoves have never been more popular, as lots of people try to make their homes cosy and full of character. But installing one isn't straightforward. There are building regs there to protect us, so you can't just have a go. Like any heating appliance, they can be extremely dangerous if not fitted properly. Many people choose a trained professional. But what happens when your trained professional turns out to be a fake. Over a million Brits now have a wood-burning stove in their home, with around 200,000 people a year having one installed. These stoves are relatively complex to put in, and safety experts recommend hiring a professional. Most professional installers belong to Heating Equipment Testing and Approval Scheme, known as HEATUS. It's a trade body that provides training and accreditation. Bruce Allen is the MD at Heatus, and he's seen demand for the stoves soar. The past 10 years saw uh, an unprecedented growth in stove use, where stoves have come forward in design greatly. To become a registered Heatus installer, you need to undertake several days of training and then demonstrate to a Heatus inspector that you can safely install a stove. These checks will cost five to £800. 
but recently heaters have had reports of a number of installers faking their credentials. One of the problems we find is that these guys, they really don't want to put the time, the effort and the money into doing the job properly, so they're not doing the, the, the real courses, they're faking their knowledge and they're, they're trying to sort of circumvent the costs of training and the cost of joining a, um, a scheme. And what's happening is they really operate in the black market, so it's, it's about avoiding all of the rules and regulations for them, it's about reducing their costs and maximising their income without actually doing the job properly. And basically it's a way of ripping off customers. In Caerphilly, Wales, Lisa Watkins was looking for a registered installer to fit a wood-burning stove. But fake heaters installers are operating across the country, as she was about to find out. So we were trying to create a family home. Um, we'd had our daughter, she was around 18 months old. Um, we decided that we would like to put a second wood burner in the house and we were looking around for recommendations and Luke was recommended to us. The installer, Luke Hathaway, arrived and offered Lisa a quote. He told her he was both heaters registered and trained. While it was true that Hathaway had started a heaters training course, he'd failed to complete it. The job took longer than Luke had promised, but eventually Lisa's stove was ready to light. He left us with a small bunch of kindling and told us that it was ready to light within a sort of hour after he'd left. It just to make sure that all the fire cement had dried. Um, after about two minutes, the room just filled with smoke. The smoke was coming out of all of the vents of the wood burner, and I had to pick up my 18-month-old daughter and run out of the house. Lisa was understandably terrified. I was just really, really frightened at the time. I didn't really know what was going on. We expected to have a fully functioning wood burner, and instead our home was filling with smoke. Um, I think there were flames coming out of the back at one point. I mean, I didn't know if the house was going to catch fire. I was just really frightened for my daughter and my partner. Fortunately, Lisa's partner reacted quickly, putting the fire out, but the situation could have been much worse. Luckily, it was only a small amount of kindling. Um, if we'd have, you know, shut the door, put a log on it and left it, then the whole house could have caught. Lisa contacted Heaters, but they were powerless to act. At this point, we couldn't remove Luke from a register that he wasn't already on, so we advised the consumers, along with ourselves, to pursue the matter through trading standards. Tim Kiahan heads up the Caerphilly Trading Standards team, and over the next few months, he discovered Hathaway had installed a total of five stoves all around the Caerphilly area. Investigations revealed that Hathaway was actually not only fitting the stoves poorly, but they weren't safe. And also, he was holding himself up to be HITAS accredited. Um, and in fact, using fake documentation to prove that fact. Tim Kiahan's team spoke with other customers and discovered Hathaway had been issuing invoices which stated he was HITAS registered. He'd even got hold of an actual HITAS certificate which prove your stove has been fitted by a genuine Heaters installer. The installer takes a copy, one is sent to Heaters and one is held by the customer. Faking these is a criminal offence. What we have here are three copies of the fake Heaters certificates issued by Hathaway. But of course, all the details about him are fake. Eventually, trading standards had enough evidence against Hathaway to stop him in his tracks. We eventually got Hathaway to court. He pleaded guilty to 12 offences under the Consumer Protection from Unfair Trading Regulations. I think the evidence was so strong because of the witnesses who were involved, um, along with the fact that we, were, we managed to get an expert to examine one of the installations and state that it was dangerous. The heaters inspection was carried out at Lisa's property and the stove Hathaway installed was classed as immediately dangerous. While Lisa and her family are safe, the cost of Hathaway's fakery has been substantial. This image is um, of the chimney liner, um, which should come all the way down the chimney, but in actual fact, because it was too short, um, Luke actually used 12 separate um, connectors to connect the chimney liner to the actual wood burning stove and they were just held together with fire cement. The damage to the house as a whole 
ran to around £2,000. There was damage to wallpaper, there was damage to my carpets. Um, our living room resembled a building site. We were left with lots of rubble. Our living room was just completely ruined. Hathaway also failed to install a carbon monoxide detector at any of the homes trading standards investigated. Installing these devices is essential if the stove is to pass British building regulations. I think it was really, really irresponsible and dangerous. I mean, something as simple as a carbon monoxide detector could have saved our life. You know, I mean, it just dreads me to think what would have happened had we lit it and gone to bed. Unfortunately, cases like this aren't isolated incidents. Heaters have had reports of nearly a dozen fake installers operating across the country, and they've started to track them down. Mike and Alan are part of Heaters' inspection team. They've had a tip-off from the builder of a potentially dangerous stove installation. What we know at this point is that somebody's gone in, they've carried out the installation, and there are a lot of things relating to the installation that um, have raised concerns of the uh, third party that's working in the property. Mike has checked the installer's name against Heatus' database and it's not registered. To make matters worse, this unregistered installer has been presenting fake documentation. OK, so it's clearly evident that the Heatus logo has been faked uh, onto this document in a clear attempt to uh, basically uh, lead the consumer to, to believe that the installation has been carried out by a Heatus registered installer. The installer's documentation might be fake, but is the stove he's installed dangerous? The couple living here who don't wish to be identified paid several hundred pounds for a professionally installed stove. The team will be using this specialist miniature camera to take a look inside the flue, the piping which runs all the way up to the chimney. At the point where the flue's been attached to the house's existing chimney, the camera reveals a serious cause for concern. That there is your expanding foam. This is your flexible flue liner. And this is the system chimney that's been used to join the two to terminate the building. And this is what's being used as a, as a sealant between the two, which is totally against regulations and is a, a fire hazard. This material should never be used in this way. But the heaters team also want to inspect the work carried out in the attic. As this system chimney goes through the fabric of the building, it's up against the felt. This is deemed as combustible material. But you've also got a wooden batten that should have been trimmed back a minimum of 50 millimetre, and that's only just 40 millimetre. This fake installer's botched job could have had tragic consequences for the couple living here. The ultimate scenario would be that there could have been a fire within the chimney. It really is an accident waiting to happen, to be honest. Mike explains the situation to the couple and recommends some approved installers in their area. He also advises them to contact Trading Standards. An investigation has been launched into this fake installer and is ongoing. That's all from Fake Britain. Goodbye.